Hi, I'm here today to talk with you about Chapter 4 in uh, Dr. Vaughn's um, The Power of Critical Thinking. This particular chapter has been updated quite a bit for the 6th edition, and so I want to make sure that you have all the pertinent information that you need to do your reading logs and answer the exercises um, and just understand where he's coming from in this particular one. Um, chapter 4 is Reasons for Belief and Doubt, and we get one more big word um, from this particular chapter. Um, but first, a little bit of a reminder. Um, if we care about, and this is on page 110, um, if we care about whether our beliefs are true or reliable, whether we can safely use them to guide our steps and inform our choices, then we must also care about the reasons for accepting those particular beliefs. Um, the better the reasons for acceptance, the more likely are the beliefs or statements to be true. And so basically making sure that your particular beliefs, these ideas in an argument, um, have backup. Um, and that's hard to do in, in today's world especially, I think, um, because we have such a proliferation of information out there. Not all of it's good. Not all of it's true. Um, and it's hard sometimes to sift through those particular parameters. Um, and so we're going to walk down this, this particular agenda today. Um, one of the big things, again, like I said, is our next big word. Um, so be on all the tests from here on out. Um, so background information is another one of those words that we use differently out in kind of our day-to-day -day life, um, like argument and statement, um, things that are particular to this discipline, particular to this class, um, but also in a way that most academics use this word is different from where probably you've heard out and about in, in your other parts of your life. Um, background information is the large collection of well-supported beliefs that we all rely on to inform our actions and choices. Um, a lot of times what we think of as common sense, um, things people should just know, um, like you know using your blinker on the highway when you're changing lanes. Um, it's obvious not everybody knows that um, or chooses to use that, but that's something that we can we would consider common sense or common knowledge. Um, things that most people having kind of paid attention to the world around them would know. Um, things like um, your, your keyboard for your computer, your laptop, your tablet is not in alphabetical order. Okay, it's a QWERTY typewriter. Cur QWERTY keyboard, sorry. Um, and maybe you know that, maybe you don't know why it's that way. Um, originally, typewriters um, had to basically whack the paper once for each letter, and so they put all the ones you use the most on your left hand um, so that it would slow you down a little bit, um, and so the, the, the keys would not get jammed together. Um, only 10% of the population is left-handed, so they were basically hedging their bets. Um, now we all use it, and most folks don't know why that's the case. Um, our computers are much faster, obviously, than um, the original typewriters were. Um, go, go look in a museum somewhere and find find one of those old guys um, to show you what that is about. But anyway, when you're looking at claims that we believe, um, remember, um, in logic, in critical thinking, we use belief and claim and statement and premise and conclusion are all basically the same idea. Um, maybe different nuances about where they show up, but that's that's the same thing. Um, and we know as well, if a claim conflicts with other claims we have good reason to believe, here's this whole set of beliefs, our worldview, our philosophy of life, um, and we know these things are true. Well, then this other idea comes along and we're like, wait, that doesn't agree with what I already know in my bones is true, um, then we have good grounds for doubting it, okay? Um, and that's a lot of what this chapter is going to show us, um, is ways to kind of weed out um, the weeds um, from the flowers in what we're looking at as far as claims and beliefs and systems go. Um, if a claim conflicts with our background information, okay, that set of well-supported beliefs that we all rely on, if, it, if, it, if a claim conflicts with that, then we also have good reason for doubting, okay? Um, the big deal here is, excuse me, 
we should proportion our level of belief to the amount of evidence given for a particular claim. Now, there are certain things that we grow up with, right? Treat other people as you want to be treated. That's a good rule of life. Um, if you would not want to be treated a particular way or you would not want to have to do a certain thing, why would you expect somebody else to? That's just kind of common courtesy, as we would say. Um, and those kinds of things that show up and we just accept them as this is how it is, um, or this is how it should be, more so. Um, those kinds of things can help us gauge whether this current um, idea or behavior that we're considering um, is really a good thing or not. Okay, it helps us judge our own ideas and pieces um, more so than other people's. Um, the other one that I think is very important for this for this chapter is it's not reasonable to believe a claim when there is no good reason for doing it. Okay, so somebody you like or somebody you admire, maybe it's a celebrity or a politician, and they say something. And your tendency is to just take what they say and make it part of you, okay? I like them, I like what they're doing, so whatever they say is good. Well, then you come up against something that isn't quite what you expected them to say or to be about a certain thing, and you have to judge, you have to think, okay, is this really something I wanna be part of or not? Okay, just because this particular person has these values in common with me does not necessarily mean I have to follow them everywhere they go. Okay, it's the, the, the equivalent of the parental um, stasis on if everybody else jumped off the bridge, would you jump too? Okay, um, so we have to think for ourselves and we have to make sure that we are thinking rationally about things and not just emotionally or sheepishly. Um, one of the things that people get um, confused about is how do we treat, how do we know somebody's an expert, okay? How do we treat the kinds of evidence that we are given on a daily basis, okay? By, I don't know, I'm on a cleaning kick at my house, so, you know, buy this particular cleanser and, you know, your tub will shine or whatever um, cliche kind of thing you have. Well, okay, I want my tub to shine, but I don't want to use any harsh chemicals. I don't want to use anything. I'm going to have to use a mask to wear to, to actually use it, um, and I don't want something that's going to hurt the environment. So how does that limit my choices, but then how does it also help me make a choice, okay? You go stand in the aisle at Walmart and go, I didn't know they made so many different kinds of cleaners for a bathtub. Okay, or tile. Um, my new house has a lot of tile in it, and so how do you clean these different kinds of things the right way? Well, people are going to tell you all kinds of things um, because they want your money, right? They want me to buy a particular product because it is their product and they will make money from it. Not so much this is the best way for me personally to do what I got to do. So, how do we know if somebody's an expert? Um, our book has quite a few pages on this, and I'm going to condense things down just a bit, so bear with me here. Um, experts have training and experience in a particular area that exceeds the norm or the everyday. Okay. Um, think about your major instructors here, um, your technical area instructors. They have years and years, some of them decades of experience in the field. They have certifications. They have training, they have, you know, all these good things. Well, that's what makes them an expert. Um, experts have more access to the kind of information we're looking at, and they're better at assessing whether this particular piece of information is good or bad because they've been doing it longer and they've had the training. Okay. So they have education and training from reputable programs in the relevant field. Remember, there is no such thing as a general expert. And just because somebody is an expert in a particular field doesn't mean that they're an expert in anything else, okay? Um, two examples for you. Um, one of my uncles um, is a, was a designer for Chrysler. And so he worked at the Chrysler plant in um, Ohio. And he was, um, the Cirrus is his car. And he, um, he worked at the same plant for 40 years. He had to have directions to his work um, kind of 
stapled on his visor the whole time. Um, he said he just doesn't retain right turn, left turn, that kind of stuff. It's just not, doesn't stick. Um, but if you ask him, you know, the in, in, internal combustion engine, blah, 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 I, I know lots about that because I asked the questions. Um, he is an expert in aerodynamics and car design and all of that kind of stuff, but don't ask him how to get to the grocery store or anything else because he has to write it down. Now, you guys probably use GPS for lots of things. Do you have to continue to use GPS even when you've come to school, you know, for a couple weeks? Eh, some people yes, some people no. Um, the other one is um, one of my dear professors from um, my grad work. Um, he's amazing. And he's retired. He's emeritus, all that kind of stuff. But he said somebody the other day um, sent him a, a query um, that Dr. X should apply for a medical position in his field. Um, well, his field is um, Victorian literature. So he's like, hey, anybody, have, any of y'all want me to replace your hip? Um, not the same kind of doctor, okay? Um, experts also have experience making reliable judgments in that field. They also are have a good reputation among their own peers. Um, if you want to know who an expert is, ask somebody else in that field, hey, what do you know about this person? Um, you will get the initial reaction, oh, they're a quack. Or, oh, they're the best, whatever. Or, I don't know them, but I can look them up. Okay. Um, and also by their professional accomplishments. Um, just, by, just because you have a PhD after your name doesn't necessarily mean you are the best person in the field. Okay. Um, also, years of experience. Um, we think about people with degrees as being kind of the up, upper crust kind of stuff, but, excuse me, if you want to know the best ways to put a cranky little one to sleep, ask grandma, okay? She's had lots of experience. She's had lots of time to figure that out. Um, now, folks who claim to be experts um, but we can tell when they are dubious, that means doubtful. Um, and remember, there's never any such thing as a general expert. A dubious authority is usually guilty of factual errors in their field. Um, now, you may ask me different things and I may get the math wrong, um, but it doesn't mean I can't do math. But it also doesn't mean I'm not an expert in my field. Um, be careful if their data is too out of date, especially in anything technical or scientific. Um, dates on things are very, very important in those particular fields. Um, that's why they use the APA style, because it privileges um, dates. Um, those of us in the English and language fields, we don't care. Um, we're still talking about Shakespeare and Plato, and they've been dead for hundreds and sometimes thousands of years, so we're okay with that. Um, but you also have to remember if it conflicts with our own background information, um, especially if we've already done a bunch of research, it's a dead giveaway. Um, they don't adequately support their assertions. They treat the opposition with disrespect um, or they're, they're the only ones who know this, okay? That kind of thing. Um, they're strongly biased or emotional. They disagree with everyone else in the field. Those are, are cues that perhaps we shouldn't be paying attention to them. Um, the next piece is personal experience. Most of the time, people, most of us, um, give primacy to what we already know. Okay. Sometimes that works great in our favor, especially if we've done some research or we've had a lot of practice in this particular area. That's wonderful. Make sure, though, that your personal experience isn't tainted in some way. One, and this is the most important one really, anything that is highly emotional, okay, whether that's a really good emotion or a really bad emotion, um, tends to color the way we see things. And it's hard to get past those. Um, so when you feel that coming on, um, just know that perhaps your perceptions aren't exactly objective. Okay, remember that's what we're after with critical thinking, it's objective truth. Um, the other two things you have to think about is 
How much time has passed since you've had this experience? If you're relying on your experience as a child, remember your understanding was also as a child. Um, and so your five-year-old self knows this for a fact, but you were five, okay? Um, and so that has differing effects on us. Um, also, if we're altered in any way when that particular event or recollection comes true. Now, by altered, I don't necessarily mean, although it does include things like alcohol, medication, um, surgery, that kind of stuff, um, where you're still woozy from the anesthetic. Um, there are tons of um, funny, I had my wisdom teeth out, videos on YouTube and other places um, that let you know you probably shouldn't take what you remember as, as gospel there. Um, one of the things we don't often think about is sleep deprivation. Now, you're a student. Um, you have experienced sleep deprivation, more than likely. Um, anytime you get less than six hours of sleep a night, you are altered um, almost as much as somebody who is legally intoxicated. Um, it doesn't feel that way, and you're not Perhaps you're, you're um, well, anyway, statistics and research shows that we are often in that particular state and it's not good for our bodies, it's not good for our minds, and it really does wreak havoc on our recollection. So be careful um, how seriously you take some of the things you remember based on those issues. Um, now, one of the things in, in this um, chapter is there he does a little bit of math, probability math, on what happens when, or how do we know what our odds are? Um, and I think it's it's hysterical in some ways that, like the um, the, Cal the North Carolina education lottery um, does that odds of winning are one in whatever. Um, and how do they get those numbers? Well, there's a whole section in this chapter that shows you how to figure those out. Um, a couple of things that I find very interesting. Um, it only takes 23 people in a room to almost guarantee that there's at least one set of birthday twins. Okay, so my birthday is May 1st, and I know of six other people who are currently on the planet that share my birthday, and that's just in my circle of knowledge. Um, there are thousands of people who share my birthday, um, thousands of people who share your birthday, but it only takes about 23 excuse me, folks in a room, for there to be at least one set. Um, and every year that I have had 24, 25 students in a room, um, we could figure that out and there would be two or three people who these two share, these two share. Um, and it's really interesting how you get that number. And I'm not going to walk through the math for you here because it's all in the book. Um, the other thing is what we consider coincidence a lot of times is just this is how many times this kind of thing happens. Okay. Um, Think about a friend that you haven't seen in a while and they either contact you or they come up in your Facebook feed or Instagram or spot, uh, whatever, whatever you're on social media wise, or they call you. Okay. Well, the fact is thousands of people run through your head every day. If one of them happens to contact you. Isn't that big of a coincidence? Um, the other one that's really interesting to me is um, gambler's fallacy. Thinking that because I have flipped this coin three times and I've gotten heads all three times, that my next flip has to be heads again or couldn't possibly be heads again, depending on how you're thinking about it. Previous random events do not influence the current random event. And by random event, we mean, okay, games of chance, dice, cards, cards are a little easier to figure out, flip a, flip a coin, okay? There are different ways to think about, okay, every time you flip a coin, it's 50-50 doesn't matter. Okay, it'll all even out eventually. Um, in line with the personal experience and the math stuff is this idea of fooling ourselves. Remember back in chapter two, to be careful when the evidence doesn't support our initial assumptions. Um, and a lot of times this is how we go about research papers and that kind of thing is that we have an end in mind. And so we go looking for things that back that up instead of looking at the research and seeing what happens. Um, so be alert 
for common problems when the evidence doesn't support what you think it should, um, ignoring particular pieces of evidence, um, denying that they're important or that they count, manipulating evidence to show what you want it to show, or otherwise discounting evidence, okay? Make sure you do your due diligence. And I need to write those, okay? D-U-E, diligence, okay? Basically, do your homework. Make sure that what you're asserting in a paper or you're asserting in your life is actually true, okay? Um, Dr. Vaughn saves the most important stuff in this chapter, I think, for the last. Um, the first part of this is evaluating evidence, and you have a whole handout on that, um, on the writing helps, um, evaluating sources, um, but this is very important stuff because we have such an overload of information in our culture that it's hard to discern which things are worth listening to and which things are worth discounting. So here's some things you can do, okay? First of all, read critically. Don't believe everything you read on the first read, okay, or on a first glance. Actually read the stuff on the page, okay? Um, make sure that you're asking questions, you're being skeptical, um, even with things you agree with, okay? Size up, which means take their measure, um, bloggers, authors, publishers. What else have they purported? What else have they asked us to believe? Um, see how outrageous or not those things are. Um, sort out the claims. Proportion your belief to the evidence. Always, always, always proportion your belief to the evidence. That's the most important thing. Um, compare sources, um, especially in politics and science and medicine. Make sure that somebody else of a reputable um, conclusion comes up with the same thing. Okay, now there's nothing against being on the vanguard of research. That's great. There's also replication. Anybody who is worthy of listening to will agree to replication. Somebody else take my, my stuff and do the same stuff I did and come up with the same answer. Okay, that's not a big deal. If they make it a big deal, clear sign to run. Um, discern the source's purpose. A lot of times, especially on social media, especially on even our regular media, um, money is the, big, is the big deal, not so much truth. Okay. Money in the way of ratings, in the way of product purchase, um, straight out donations, things like that. Okay. If that's their sole purpose, doesn't mean that they're not truthful, but you have to kind of do a little bit of extra diligence to make sure that you're not being taken, your money's not being taken from you um, unnecessarily. Um, check out alternative news sources um, just because you like what they say on CNN or what they say on Fox News or what they say on WREL um, doesn't mean you shouldn't go check things out, especially when it's something you have to make a decision about. Um, and we're talking, you know, politics, we're talking um, medication, we're talking money. All of those things are your responsibility, and so you really do need to do a little bit more digging than just say, oh, that's what they said on my, my favorite channel. Um, most of the time, they're probably right, but make sure. Um, this idea of what is called fake news, um, and I don't like that terminology because news is factual, okay, by its definition, news is factual. Um, if it's fake facts, those are lies, okay? And we have to be careful to hold folks accountable, um, but also on our own selves to hold ourselves accountable. Um, it's not okay to just pass on information, um, help distribute information that you have not verified. And it happens all the time, not just on social media. Um, and this idea of um, falsification of information is not new, okay? Um, Plato wrote about it in 300 BC, so it's been around a while, but right now, especially in the last 10 years or so, um, the proliferation of bad information is 
um, nearly pervasive. It's everywhere. Um, and people are very quick to forward or share um, or whatever um, this very provocative idea and without doing any background. Okay. So before you click share or before you spread a rumor, um, make sure you're thinking about where it comes from. Consider the source. Okay. In addition to all of these things, consider the source. Okay. Does this particular news operation share things that are inflammatory? Share things that they later have to retract. Um, share things that are untrue, patently untrue or subtly untrue. Okay. Um, read beyond the headline. We all know about clickbait. Okay. There's this horrible sounding or wonderful sounding, depend upon you know what kind of person you are. Um, headline, and we're like, what? That can't possibly be true. Click. Okay. And that's fine. That's what they want you to do, right? Um, but what you need to do is make sure that you're not just clicking on a, on a title and then forwarding it on. Hey, look at this horrible thing. Well, is it really a horrible thing? Sometimes the title has nothing to do with what's actually in the article. Okay. And you don't want to be spreading hurtful or damaging or wrong information under your own name, right? Um, so read beyond the headline, make sure that what's in the actual article is true. Um, oftentimes scammers um, will put something in there saying, oh, House Bill 305 um, was passed today and it does these things. Well, it's true that House Bill 305 was passed today, but it doesn't do any of these things. Okay, or House Bill 305 doesn't exist, but it looks official, and so we buy it. Okay, um, always, always, always check through some sort of debunking site like Snopes.com. Um, make sure that you're looking at an actual website, an actual news website. Um, things that are satirical, like The Onion, um, is, is all kinds of fun to read, but it's not real, okay? Um, they're using hyperbole and satire to kind of make you go, huh, I wonder. Um, but it's not actual news. Um, check your own biases. Just because your favorite person said X doesn't make it true. It doesn't. Just because your least favorite person said X doesn't make it untrue. You have to be prepared to believe the truth regardless of where it comes from. And anybody can be truthful, okay? Um, but just because they're a nice person or they think like you doesn't make them infallible. None of us are, okay? Everybody makes mistakes. Some people put stuff out that is purposefully wrong and misleading and damaging, okay? We have to be careful not to be those people. The last thing here is verify veracity. Make sure that what you think is the truth is really the truth, okay? What they're saying is true. Make sure you walk through that, okay? And Dr. Bond does a really good job of getting at all of these things in the book too, so make sure you read that. The last portion of chapter four is about ads and persuasion. Now, it should come as no surprise that we should be skeptical about any advertisement we receive. Even if it's from a reputable place that is asking us for a serious donation or is asking us to help in a particular way, they're wonderful. But at the end of the day, they're looking for your money. And so you have to be careful not to give in too easily. Okay. Um, remember that money should always bring about our skepticism at the very least. Um, and we need to be careful to know that every advertisement is selling something, whether we're understanding what they're actually selling or not. Um, the adage in advertising is sex sells. Um, and sex comes in lots of different packages. Um, we think about the most out there are the, the beer ads, right? 
this wonderful setting and it's gorgeous and all the people there are gorgeous and they're having a great time because they're, you know, drinking whatever the beer is of, of the day. And on the surface, we think, oh yeah, it's a beer commercial, they're selling beer. Well, they're also selling that desire for the perfect life. They're also selling that desire to be desired, okay? Um, and so we have to be careful how far into our emotions the, the advertiser is trying to get. The more highly um, emotional or um, sexual it is, the less likely we should believe it, okay, as a truth anyway. Um, make sure that you're looking at manipulations correctly. Um, they want you to identify with a particular celebrity or lifestyle. Okay, that's pretty easy to figure out. All those little slogans and jingles, um, the little things that get in your head and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, nobody out pizzas the hut kind of thing. Um, Misleading comparisons, this is 25% more than X. Well, what's X? What's more than? Okay, what are my numbers? Um, be careful of statistics, especially percentages where they don't tell you how many or how much. Okay? Um, and then there are all these weasel words. Um, most of, some of, all of those kind of benign things, but also things that are... Um, 100% bigger, um, totally re, re, renewed, or um, I always like the um, totally revised versions of things. It's like, well, if it's a totally a total revision, then it's not that thing anymore. Okay, whether that's a car or a product or software or whatever. Okay, so be careful. Just be careful. Um, that's chapter four, and I know it's a little bit long, but chapter four is a little long. Um, so here are the pieces that you need. Um, to remember, in, in particular, don't forget about our big word um, background information. Um, a little different than what we're used to seeing, but still common sense and common knowledge. So if you have questions, send me an email.